If you missed HL7's recent Fire Applications Roundtable, here are a few highlights of fire-based interoperability solutions in use today. So um, we have been doing this as a standalone application for a couple of years now. We're deployed in commercial contracts, but we've really been waiting <laughs> for Fire to come along to solve our problem of integrating into the clinical workflow at scale. The goal is not only to develop a clinical research tool, but to be able to take that, turn it into a commercially viable and scalable product. And that's really where Fire comes in for us. Um, but when we got started, our company's pretty new. We're only 10 months in now. Uh, about uh, six months ago, uh, we developed an uh, I iPhone iOS app, and we launched it in the App Store. I encourage you to try it out. It's free for download. And the goal was to be able to say, can we put this in the hands of more physicians so that they can use it, they can experience it, and ultimately, can we affect uh, the quality of care? The application launches with a patient context from the EHR. Where the provider then authenticates, and the application begins querying fire resources in order to pre-populate relevant parts of the heart pathway algorithm. The application then presents the provider with a series of yes-no questions about the patient, starting with presenting symptoms, followed by relevant risk factors. Note that the high BMI is a risk factor that was auto-populated from fire resources. Finally, any ECG abnormalities are selected, and the results can be calculated and displayed. The provider is given a numerical HEAR score, along with a risk categorization of either high or low, and the recommended next steps. The provider can then write these results directly back to the patient record as a note or use the natural language HPI we generate as a starting point for further customization. What we started with was a baseline bilirubin app, which was developed uh, by Intermountain for their Cerner platform. And this just shows how this looks uh, integrated into our Epic platform. You can see on the left-hand side, there's a tab for the bilirubin app. And what we started with was uh, uh, what Intermountain had, which was uh, visualization of the bilirubin levels over time. Um, and just an uh, uh, overlay of uh, risk zones uh, based on population data. This is a, a screenshot from our current Brilubin application. This is in production use with an EPIC. Um, so uh, what you see here, um, uh, again, it's, it's, it's the Brilubin app uh, tab that you can uh, access if you're a pediatrician in our system. Uh, you can see, um, yeah, so on here it's uh, uh, y-axis is the Brilubin levels over time, x-axis as hours since birth, uh, the blue line shows the uh, bilirubin levels, and uh, for bilirubins, you can both use a transcutaneous uh, measurement, and you can do a, a, a serum or a, a blood measurement. And uh, we integrate both, but because transcutaneous uh, labs have a little bit of um, uh, different performance characteristics, we uh, visually label that with the T, which you can so This, for example, pulls in the baby's blood type and indirect whom's really cool here. Uh, we can identify the link in the uh, medical record for who the mother is, and so we can go into the mother's record and pull uh, her data in too so that the you know, physician doesn't have to say, okay, who's the mother? I'm going to go into her chart. I'm going to go into her chart review, look for this info. Uh, so our physicians seem to really like this. As you can see, the patient launch, launches um, the Pillbox app from my chart. Um, it communicates with the authorization servers, so that's how you know, it knows that you are actually a deep patient. You have a my chart account, my chart account um, and grabs those you know, fire resources. Um, authenticates the app through my chart, goes to Dash, which is our uh, API manager, and then goes through to the EHR, grabs the information, sends it back um, into the back end, and then the patient sees that. So why we are using Fire is, I think it's obvious to all of us that, hey, it's there, why reinvent it? And uh, it has the flexibility, as everybody is presenting today, I'm amazed at a number of use cases and the diversity of those use cases that FIRE is able to support. Came down to his office and he showed it to me and he said, you know, I used to just pick up a microphone and record all of my, you know, all the medical information. It was minutes. And now I'm having to click tape all day long and it's becoming a click mare. So he said, man, I just want to talk to it. I said, man, that's a great idea. How hard can that be? The patient appears anemic and pale, period. First one's got to start up. Patient's heart rate's 98 and blood pressure's 120 over 80, period. The patient presents with severe pain and swelling in the left knee due to micro tears and patella tendon, period. The thing to note here is we're taking a statement, running an LP on it, mapping it, 
to a graph database, an in-memory graph database that has millions of the nodes in it. That, because if we build a healthcare system that's dependent on all this information and we have to capture it and we take one of the, one of the most problematic things in healthcare and that's the amount of time that it takes to capture the medical record for our most valuable resources, which are our cl clinicians. We do a lot of research. We find uh, the clinical care maps that are either published in journals or provided by medical special societies. Um, and we combine that with insulin and prevalence statistics that we get primarily from the CDC. And we create, uh, in the center here, uh, basically uh, state machines. We call them disease modules. What the goals are is to create um, your very own smart on fire capable um, system in the cloud. And you can invite other people to join, so it's team-based. Um, as well as it, it's designed to help you build your app as quickly as possible, get clinicians or users to come in and give you buy-off on what it is that you're doing, and then eventually take it into production. Demo.cdshooks.org uh, is the landing page here, which has a public server with some sample data loaded into it, and uh, what I would call a pretty low-fidelity mock EHR. But the idea is to mock out just enough interactions that if you're developing uh, a CDS service, you can use this as the EHR side to test your service and see what it looks like. Uh, and so in this test harness, the right-hand side of the screen here is basically debugging data. It's a, a fire representation of, in this case, the prescription that's being written. Uh, and the idea here is on the left-hand side of the screen is a pretty primitive prescribing pad. And as I make changes to my prescription, uh, the, the debug debugging console will update and show what I've done. So for example, um, if I'm about to write a prescription for a drug, um, as I type in values here, the va the, once I choose a drug, um, this fire representation gets updated to show uh, the particular instructions here, like take one pill uh, once a day and a link to or a code for a particular drug product. So that's debugging information about what's happening behind the scenes. But over here on the left-hand side, in the, in the part that the user would see, uh, is an example of one of these cards that's being generated and displayed in line. And in this case, it's a pricing service. As soon as I choose a drug, the pricing service responds with a suggestion card because it notices that I've uh, proposed a prescription for uh, an expensive medication, which is a brand name drug, Zofran, where in, in practice there is a generic version available that is 95% um, less expensive. And so in this case, it's including um, a rationale here. You're spending $1,200. You could save just about $1,200 if you changed to a generic. And it includes a button here with a label that says change to generic. Aidbox has a uh, OAuth 2.0 authentication provider, but you also can use an external authentication provider if you want. We have uh, HL7 version 2 to fire connector, so you can uh, send HL7 version 2 fire, uh, HL7 version 2 data uh, into Aidbox, and we translate it into fire and store it into the fire server. The real engine is natural language conversion. Again, an extensible rule set based on terminology, which is now standard space too, uh, but also keywords and just the way we know people generally speak and chat. Uh, Iris Chatbot translates that dialogue into commands that are then, uh, again, converted into Fire API calls and responses to give the dialogue back to the user. Seeing is believing. We hope to see you at next year's event.